My father was a Christian. Uh, my, my grandmother, my father, and my grandfather, they were in the churches. And uh, my father was in the church as well. He started back in the nation. Um, that's where, I guess, you know, for African-American Muslims, um, we didn't have a lot, especially coming from slavery. Um, so in order to change ourselves, the, is the nation of Islam was a beautiful thing for a lot of black Muslims. But as my father learned about, learned more about Islam and learned more about uh, what Islam was, uh, he became Sunni Muslim. And um, when I was born, he was fully transitioned into full Sunni Muslim. <laughs> when I was younger, uh, my father, he always recited, he always wanted me to recite, he always recited in front of us. And um, he learned that I had a good memory when I was younger, so um, when I turned 12, I started memorizing the Quran, and three and a half years later, I was 15 and a half, I'm, I finished the Quran, alhamdulillah. But then, his life took a different turn. Ended up in the nightclub, dunya took over. Completely different. From the deen to the dunya. To the dunya. What happened? Hard. آمن الرسول بما أنزل إليه من ربه والمؤمنون كل آمن بالله وملائكته وكتبه ورسله لا نفرق بين أحد من رسله وقالوا سمعنا وأطعنا غفرانك ربنا وإليك المصير. This is a living miracle for anyone who takes a look. It is a living miracle, and he was the one carrying it. And then he drifted off, ended up in the clubs, in the nightclubs. Dunya took over. I think as we grew up in Islam. Um, we don't appreciate because I can't blame it on my parents because my parents did the best they can and um, As Muslims we don't really as kids we don't appreciate what we actually have and also with parents they'll have um, I believe that sometimes we are too hard on our children and we don't let our children really understand and love Islam like we're supposed to so as we get older we kind of drift away because it's kind of too harsh or it's um, like too strict and as we get out into the world especially in the dunya the dunya got a lot of sparkly things but I won't say unfortunately fortunately that's what happened to me because and I say fortunately because um, now that I have a daughter and now that I'm a, a, a husband um, I really appreciate Islam you were blessed that you ended up coming back to the dean yeah. some people get lost what were some of the things that you were doing some of the things that you were involved in and then now comparing it to where you are now. I felt like, you know, everything was fun, but as I got older, it was no purpose. It was like, what am I doing? And so, you know, I'm a bouncer, I'm a, I'm a security guard, I'm, I'm, I'm seeing all this nightlife and things like that, but I was working mm -hmm. in the clubs, I was then partying in the clubs, I was, uh, so literally I was in the clubs every day. And um, it wasn't until, I went to the masjid and, and one of the sheikhs, Imam Fatim. But Imam Fatim asked me to lead the prayer. And I felt bad. I was like, lead the prayer? I was like, nah, I can't. I, I, so I, he made me lead the prayer. I led the prayer, but. Um, so you didn't I, totally, you were still connected to the masjid somehow? Yeah, because people know my father. So, and were I. Were you kind of living a double life here? That's exactly what I was doing. Even though I stayed away from the masjid, online i wasn't telling people what i was doing and i wasn't taking pictures and a bunch of stuff taking videos and showing everybody what i was doing i was doing it and i was kind of staying a little quiet about it you know people who were around me knew what i was doing but uh, you concealed they, your sins but um as far as the my father everybody knew who my father was um so i was watched a lot and i, I appreciate that but i was watched a lot so i made sure i kept um that life away from my father so, alhamdulillah, I go to a masjid uh, one day, and it was in Ramadan. And subhanAllah, 
I went to school in Baltimore. I see both my teachers there, both my half of the teachers there. Sheikh Hussein walks up to me, Marcin, did you finish? Did you, are you are you reviewing? I lied to him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm reviewing. I'm reviewing. Lying. My other brother comes up to me. How's your Quran? Oh, it's great. It's great. It's great. Ironically, both of them tell me, go ahead and lead. <laughs> and subhanAllah, and I messed up. And that's when they said, brother, you got you to gotta stay on it. You, you spent a lot of time in Vegas also? And they call that, did they call that Sin City? Sin City. It ain't Sin City for no reason. Yeah? Sure. Is it a big Muslim community there? It's a big Muslim community, but unfortunately, your environment is still Sin City. Yeah. Even though you can, you can only stay away, but so much. Because as you get older, you know, you you turn 16. You, what do you want to do? You want to go hang out with your friends. Where are your friends going? Your friends are going to to the club. Your friends are seeing drinks. Your friends are seeing partying every single night. So what helped you now finally come back? What was it? Living the double life, you know, uh, worrying about disappointing your father. Shoot, I was hungry. You're hungry. <laughs> and yeah. I was like, that was Ramadan. Yeah. So let me go to the masjid, go act like I'm Muslim for a little while and, and go get some food. My plan was just go get some food and go. Allah put good people in my life, kept good people in my life. And because they didn't know my double life, they still were looking at Muslim and Hafid. Just living that double life all the time, you just feel like a liar. Literally, every day, you just... For you, you, you try to hide everything. Your mom calls you, you at a party, you don't want to answer the phone. Now you got to call your mom. That could be the time that your mom is sick. She calling you to tell you that she in the hospital, but you in the club, and you don't want to disappoint your mom. Or how about this? You know, you th if you really think about it, what if I died in those states? Man. And I ain't think about it then. I think about it now. What if I would have died in that state? Being drunk, being high, dance with a girl, and crazy thing is now like man thank Allah that I, I, I I'm able to he's given me just a little bit of time to try to repent try to do as much good as possible to try to get back whatever stupidity I did when I was younger so now we now we have Hafiz Muhsin who came back to the Dean Alhamdulillah yeah on back. the Dean show now I, I, I I'm always I'm just happy because Allah gave me my some time to, to accept um, just appreciate everything that I went through so as far as like I don't regret anything I went to I feel bad but I don't regret it because I don't think I would be the person that I would be without going through it because for Islam for me it was a culture when I was younger and now it's a religion for me you, I, want what you, I, I want for you what you want for me you, when you want something Allah will give it to you Allah will put you um with the right people. And I always make this dua. Male, oh Allah, please keep me away from the bad and make give like push me towards the good. So when I see good people, I don't care what they do. It doesn't matter. I don't care what you are, it's a matter it's a matter of who you are. You being an athlete, professional athlete, you know, how important is it for people to get involved in sports and also nutrition in your life? So very important. We gotta stay healthy. Just like Allah says, you're supposed to take care of your body. Take care of your vessel. I mean, it's cool to indulge in whatever you, you need to that's halal and things like that. But you have to have a balance. Islam is about balance. So as much as you eat junk food, you got to make sure you work that off. You got to make sure you eat some health. You know I mean, be healthy, eat some healthy things, and make sure that your, your health is good. Because you want to make sure you have as much life as Allah allows you to. Yeah. But if you have the resources in the or if you have the ability to stay in shape the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam the sahabas they stayed in shape the prophet didn't didn't get into islam until he was 40 these brothers were wrestling they were <laughs> they were getting ready for war the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam had over 60 battles like these guys these brothers were in shape over 40 so 40 is not a, a old age it's a young age and alhamdulillah we got to stay in shape we got to we got to be um, healthy for our children as well but also, you know, take a walk after Fedger, you know. Take a walk when the sunrise is really nice outside. If you're a night out, take a walk after Isha. Take a walk with your wife. Take a walk with your father. Stay healthy. Alhamdulillah. So as we close it up, tell us, for the people who are tuning in, and they might have drifted off, kind of like you did, and now they're tuning in, what advice would you give them? 
before they go away even further, but you got their attention. They heard you reciting the Book of Allah, the Quran. They're listening to your story, how you came back. What advice would you give them? Islam is not a race. It's a marathon. Your Islam is not anybody else's uh, entertainment. Your relationship with Allah is your relationship with Allah. And so what the best thing to do is try to get back. Gradually, slowly get back to praying. Get back to saying dhikr. So you might be, I, I would, trust me, I was out there. And alhamdulillah, I was able to come back. So for the brothers who are out there and sisters who are out there and, and just trying to figure out something, start hanging around people who do this, something different. I promise you, you, you you'll, it'll, it'll start changing because they won't want to do the stuff that you want to do. You surround yourself with people who, want, who love Islam. Hang around those people. I promise you, you won't be thinking about doing anything else. Get around good companionship. Oh, yeah. Good. Yes, very important. You are who your companions are. Absolutely. Or birds of a feather flock, flock together. together. Yes, yes. All right. Hafiz, Wilson, Kaysen, really nice having that. you on the Dean Show. You don't even have to call me Hafiz, man. You know what's crazy? For the brothers and sisters who keep the Quran and maintained it, those are Hafiz. I am a brother who did memorize the Quran, but I fell off. And inshallah, Mel, please pray for me that I get all the Quran back. I mean, inshallah, that's when I, I, I can I can call myself Hafiz. But I can't take that title from the people who have never drifted off. And maybe they forget a little bit, but they they, they, they hold on to the Quran tightly. Those are my true Hafiz. And so for me, I'm a brother who memorizes the Quran. Alhamdulillah, I have the Quran with me. But I'm getting it back. And when I do really get it back, that's when I can be called a Hafiz. This is the opening chapter of the Quran and Fatiha. Alhamdulillah. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين In the name of Allah, the most gracious, the most merciful Praise be to Allah, the Lord of the world Master of the day of judgment You alone do we worship and you alone do we ask for help Show us the straight path, the path of those whom you have worshipped, not the path of those who have earned your anger, nor of those who have gone astray.